southeast of the country bracing for more extreme weather. More than 20 million people will be at risk in the coming hours in a region already battered by days of deadly storms. A tornado slammed into Troop County, Georgia on Sunday where violent weather tore off roofs and destroyed up to 100 homes in the town of LaGrange. And at least 26 people were killed in Friday's tornadoes. CNN's Nick Valencia reports from one of the worst hit towns. My first time coming back since the storm. What do you think? Just blessed to be alive. As the massive EF4 tornado headed towards his Rolling Fork apartment, Antoine Jones, a local police officer, took cover with his girlfriend in their bathroom tub. The bell tub left from over us, and the storm actually placed us down where the bell tub was originally. I mean, you have to think that this is maybe the end for you. You're up in the air, you're floating around. Yes, sir. We, we, we thought we were thought we were going to die. We thought we were going to die. Miraculously, both survived with just a few scratches. Then Jones, who was born and raised in Rolling Fork, put on his uniform and went to work. Once I realized that I was okay, it was time to get into the first responder mode. A few blocks away, we meet Amanda Kelly and her boyfriend, Scotty. In February, she says, she was diagnosed with spinocerebellar ataxia, a Parkinson's-like condition that affects her ability to walk and talk. And now this. If it was not for Scotty and God, I wouldn't be here. There is no doubt. Because I wouldn't have been able to get from my room to the hallway by myself. And I wouldn't have been able to hold myself down. You were getting blown away? I was literally getting sucked up. We uh, both were. Kelly lost both her walkers in the tornado, along with so much else. But like many here in Rolling Fork, their material possessions are meaningless to them, given the fact they survived when so many didn't. The house went to shaking, and I said, yeah, it's really serious this time. For 65-year-old Elijah Washington, this is the third tornado he survived. This one, he says, was by far the worst. Through a smile, he says he's lucky. In this devastated mobile home park, where eyewitnesses tell CNN several people died, Washington says he was one of the few of his neighbors who had home insurance. I heard somebody moan and said a stick through somebody's head, a couple of legs broke, you know, and stuff like that. So. And here you are with just a scratch on your finger. Yeah. A scratch on my finger and walking around. I walked out of here last night. It's just amazing. Amazing is one word for it. Antoine Jones would rather see his story of survival as a sign from God, and he says he's going to listen. That was your girlfriend that you were in the tub with? Yes, sir. So you got to get married now. You know that, right? Yes, sir. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I can't let it go. Well, Nick joins me now from Rolling Fork. Uh, Nick, just extraordinary scenes there. You've been speaking to survivors of these horrific tornadoes, uh, many of which lost everything. What do they feel, given the fact that there are more forecasts on the way? Yeah, it is uh, devastating to see these images here, Linda. It, it's sobering, you know, to see this devastation all throughout this town. Just very few portions of it were left untouched by that EF4 tornado that ripped through here. Just behind my camera, an open field that tore through here and had nothing to break it up except these homes. And Joyce Brewer, your home was one of the first that got hit by the tornado. Yes, you were home with your three-year-old granddaughter. Tell me what happened. Well, you know, I looked out the door and... I could see that it was bad outside and I told my son to get up off the couch and get in the tub with her and he got up and I shut the door and my husband hollered, y'all get in the hallway. We got in the hallway and next thing you know, it hit. I, I want to look behind us here because he was sitting right there with that brick wall yes, sir. collapsed with yes, his three-year-old yes, and it, it just in a matter of seconds. Yep. If he wouldn't have got up, they, they would probably be gone. How are you guys coping today? I mean, it, it seems as though we're here just a few days removed from the storm and it's starting to hit some people here. How, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing a lot better because I got a place to live and we got our lives. So that's, that's right. you know, like I said, material things can be replaced, but lives can't. What does it say right there on your shirt? Mississippi strong. <laughs> What's that mean to you? Hey, we're strong. We're going to survive one way or the other.
God bless you. I know you're going through a lot right now. We really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Joyce Brewer, just one of the many extraordinary stories that we're hearing of survival. Her neighbor, her neighbors, Linda, right next door, uh, an elderly couple. You see that big rig right there, that 18 wheeler? Their, their bodies were found right underneath here. So this was a community that was uh, hard hit and uh, there were lives lost in this, uh, in this, really, you know, in this subdivision here. Uh, it is going to take a long, long time for this uh, to get back to normal here. Linda. Yeah, and certainly a sense of resilience from, from those survivors there. Nick Valencia, great reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Thank you.